Good morning, everybody. Ah, I'm really glad to be here. It's not easy for me. Uh, I always, um, yeah, I'm a bit shy to speak in public, but I have to do it many times. <laughs> and I know. But the Lord gives always strength to do it. And uh, this morning, I really want to share with you something out of my life. Um, I'm from the Netherlands. I lived there for 45 years almost. And then the Lord uh, moved me to Bolivia. It <coughs> is the first mission field. Well, uh, a real, as everybody said, a real mission field. That's not real because our neighbor is also our mission field. Don't forget that, please. There begins our mission. And, uh, well, 44 years it took us to become at the point where the Lord could say, now you go. And we just thought, well, we are settled now. The Lord doesn't want to use us outside of the country. So, okay, well, that was not so okay. The Lord said, now is your time. And there were some missionaries from Bolivia who invited us. After a short time, the Lord confirmed that we had to go there. And we've gone there, and uh, we had children in need on our hearts. And uh, we arrived there from the Netherlands, a very developed country. And we came to a country what was about 200 years ago. Yeah. So... It was not easy. And another language. Uh, yeah, you can say, what? You knew languages. Yes, but not Spanish. Uh, yeah, 45 years learning Spanish. Because otherwise you can't serve a people when you don't know their language. And language is a part of their culture. So you won't understand them not their culture when you don't know the language. Or everybody who wants to go in mission abroad, please learn the language of that country. Otherwise, it's so difficult to serve the people. And they won't, they won't believe you. Because if you even don't want to, to learn their language, what do you do here? So... We learned it, and uh, after nine months, uh, we were able to defend ourselves. That's the way we say it. <laughs> That's the way I speak in English also. Uh, <laughs> we uh, went from La Paz, that's the city where the government is, and the capital of Bolivia is Sucre, but the government is in La Paz. It's uh, one of the highest cap uh, um, cities in the world where the people live. It's almost 4,000 meters, 3,600. I'm sorry, I don't know how much it is in feet. <laughs> but it's very high, I can assure you. <laughs> and the people there are very introvert. That was really hard because you wanted to speak with them and they look at you, yes, but, and they go away. And when you are not used to that, it really hurts. But there's always the Lord who says, I put you here in this country so you will be able. Well, after uh, our study in, well, the first five months we were in La Paz and then the Lord moved us to Santa Cruz because 
of the people who were so introverts, we couldn't speak with nobody. And when you want to learn a language, you have to speak. And so we went to Santa Cruz. La Paz is in the highlands, in the Andes. Santa Cruz is in the lowlands, in the subtropical part. The people there is totally different. They are open. You go into a taxi, the driver starts to speak to you. When you are leaving the taxi, he's still speaking. <laughs> so that's so wonderful. <laughs> no, that was a big difference. And the Lord opened the doors there, and we could buy a property. We started to build uh, the first unit because the Lord showed us a plan from units, not a children's home, just one building. No, a children's home from families. Because that's the, the cornerstone the Lord showed us. Family is so important. And uh, we started the first unit. It, uh, the outside was done, the inside not. The money we had for it was done. We had only money for some tickets to go to Holland for our Verlof for three months. And then the Lord said, you don't go to Holland before this unit is really done. Is yeah. Uh, it's how it has to be, and there will be people, and you will receive the first children, and then you can go. Well, we put the money in it. We didn't have any more money, but we finished the first unit. We found a couple who wanted to work with us, and the first children from prison, because that's what the Lord showed us, work with the children from prison. Those children are not con convicted. Convicts. Yes. But their parents are. And uh, they take the children into the prison with them. And the government is okay with it. Then it's so quiet, yes, but those children are in a university of criminals. They, they will leave worse than they come in. So the Lord gave us this vision to take them out. And, uh, well, I have to say, I first wasn't a card with the Lord. I didn't agree. <laughs> I I was so afraid. It was not my ambience. My late husband, he, he has been in prison. And he, he knew it. He wanted it. But I said, no, no, no. Well, the Lord has his ways to convince somebody. And... Uh, <coughs> I, I really have to admit, I'm, I'm a strong person, a strong will. <laughs> <laughs> but, as I said, the Lord knows the way. And he gave me a dream in which I stood in prison, a bunch of children around me, and some grabbed my hands, and we walked to the gates, Iron Gates. I have never been in a prison. I, I had never been in a prison. But I saw it clearly for me. It was one palm and some flowers on the ground. And there was I with this bunch of children and we walked to the gates to go out. I woke up and said, well, that's just because we were speaking about it. No, that's not from the Lord. No. No. He doesn't want me to go there. Yeah. Oh, 
the Lord says, when I say something, you have to go. <laughs> so two days later, again, the same dream. Well, to avoid the third dream, I said, okay, Lord, I'll do it. I will obey, but then you have to take out of me that fear. I was so afraid. And when we have gone the first time to the prison, I was without fear. I've gone inside, and then you have to know that the police is outside. It's not inside prison. They stay outside. They themselves are afraid. So, and we have gone in it, and it was exactly how the Lord showed it me in the dream. It was exactly the same place. It was so apart. Well, during a lot of years, we could take out several children out of uh, prison. Uh, the local government didn't like it so much because the director of the social social area uh, she uh, uh, was a bit uh, helping the people who we, we were in business of child uh, traffic. What we did, because you need all the uh, the, the cell, cellulars. Oh, how do you say that? The seals yeah. and the uh, the firms, the signs of uh, the government and the director and well, a lot of signs. All the OKs. Yes, all the OKs. And well, we avoided that by making our own papers. We have gone into prison uh, talking with people who had their children with them and who really liked to have a good place for them. Meanwhile, they were in prison. And they gave their permission, signed the papers. Then we went to the director of the prison. He signed. Then to the governor of the prison. He signed. Then the, a social worker signed. So we got the children out, went to the healthcare, and they uh, were tested on everything, and then we could take them to the children's home. Once in the children's home, we went with those papers to the local government, and they couldn't do anything else than sign, because, yeah, everybody had signed. But it wasn't easy, I tell you, and especially because you you are coming from, well, I hate to say it, but from the first world to the third world, and that's not easy. We lived for a time in just one room, and uh, we had water outside, of course. That was all, was no air conditioning, and uh, you had to clean every day the house, and you cleaned it, all the, um, all the sand outside. But the wind came, and through the roof, between the roof and the wall was such a space, so it came inside. <laughs> and, but with the Lord, you can do it. And... I really can say, from the beginning of uh, my being a child of the Lord, he gave me the words, the joy of the Lord is your strength. Yes. And I really kept it all those years, and I'm still full of his joy, and full of his strength. And I tell you, the Lord can call you. It doesn't matter your age, or you are young or old in human <laughs> vision. Yes, he can call you and then obey him. It's worth to do it because you will receive so much more than you leave behind. We left our daughters behind for the youngest was 18, so it was not she was not a baby, but, well, you have to leave them behind. Our first grandchild, 
Oh, yay. Our first grandchild was 10 months, and that is the only one who I have seen during so such a long time. I've already great grandchild and children now, and uh, I I won't see them grow up, but the Lord gives me a lot of other children. I have such a big family now, you're including. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, I, I can only say, praise God, because He did it. We didn't it. I didn't it. I wanted to be used by the Lord. And it is really for His glory that I can say hundreds of children are saved. Many of them come back now to visit me when I am at home in Bolivia. They visit me with their children, and they all say, we are so, so thankful that you have risked up, rescued us, because now we know the Lord, and now we know how to, how to educate our children, because many of them didn't know, but they know now, and they can give them the same love they received in the children's home. That's so wonderful to see. So when a, li a life is broken, don't think it has been broken for always. No, the Lord can heal. The Lord can restore. The Lord can reform everybody. Nobody excluded. Because we all are pearls in his hands. Not only the children. Also adults, also teenagers, also old people. Yeah, even so. me. <laughs> <laughs> yes. So that's what I yeah, really wanted to share with you. Uh, I can share a lot. 31 years is a long time. <laughs> but, well, whenever you wanted to know more, uh, about five times a year, I'm writing a newsletter, also in English. I have a wonderful daughter who is now American, and she translates it for me, to be honest. <laughs> yeah. So, and we have still uh, yeah. Got, uh, some few, there, few of them. This is her youngest granddaughter, or great-granddaughter here in the yeah. United States. Which is now his great-granddaughter, too. <laughs> So, so, yeah. And it's got a lot of information about what goes on there. Yes. In here. And if yeah. you care to donate, there's stuff on the back for it. Yeah. And if you want to write me, uh, my uh, email address is there too. Yeah. Right. Yes. Our time's up. Oh. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Thank you so much. God bless you. And, yeah, I hope you will hear the voice of the Lord in your life. And I can only say, do whatever he asks you. It's worth to do it. Praise his name. Amen. Amen. Oh, yeah.